Well, joy to the world. Uh, just a short segue into the uh, book of Revelation, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Um, death, judgment, pestilence and famine. I don't know much about football, but some people used to think that the four horsemen of the apocalypse were the uh, running backs for Notre Dame football team. However, the big four are death, judgment, heaven and hell. Now they're the big four, okay? Um, so death, uh, you see the word eat in the middle of the word death, D-E-A-T-H. Uh, it says appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment. Uh, Christ has died, Christ has risen. Christ will come again to judge the living and the dead. The scripture says, uh, death, where is your sting? So we know about death, but I'd like to emphasize with you this year in particular, because I heard it in a new way this Easter, uh, the resurrection of the body. The soul doesn't die. You as a person will not die, but your body will die. And you can see that brought out very clearly on Calvary, that when, when Dismas, uh, turned to Jesus on the cross and who was being crucified as well and he says to Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom and Jesus said to him today he said you'll be with me in paradise and then shortly after that the bodies of both men died they themselves were with God in paradise uh, main point I'm trying to make here is we as persons, as spirits, do not die, even if we were forever in hell, but our bodies die. And that's why the creed said, I believe in the resurrection of the body. It's like all the seeds that are under the ground at this moment all over the universe. You know, they'll, they'll burst open. They're dead in the ground somehow. It comes back to life. Judgment. Um, there, are th <clears throat> there are three judgments. Um, again, this is probably not new to you because I've been talking about it for some time and I myself had missed it for years, didn't realize there was three judgments. There's the particular judgment. Um, I die today. Um, the person that is me leaves my body and I go before Christ for the judgment, the particular judgment. And Jesus taught about, told us about the particular judgment when he preached that famous parable of the rich man who feasted splendidly every day and the poor man covered with sores, dying at his front gate. And the rich man didn't even throw a scrap of bread to the poor dying man. And when the, um, the, the poor man died, he was carried by angels into the bosom of Abraham. The rich man died and went to hell, the particular judgment. Then there's the, um, the general judgment at the end of time. Um, when Christ comes back again in glory to judge the living and the dead, all the nations of the earth would be assembled in front of him. All the nations, Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, people who didn't know Christ, it doesn't matter. They're all going to be judged. And they're going to be judged not upon whether they knew Jesus or not. They're judged on, on charity. Like he'll say to those on his right hand side, come blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick, you came to visit me. You came to see me in prison. And all of these people who don't even know Christ will say to uh, Jesus, when did we do this for you? And again, the answer comes back, as long as you did it to the least of the brothers, you did it to me. 
you may, some of you may have heard me ask the question, are you Jesus? Are you Jesus? Well, let me put it to you this way. Let's say you, listening to this video this moment, um, find yourself on the streets of Ocala, uh, down and out, uh, battered, uh, homeless, addicted, and by some, and, and you're not a, a Christian, we'll say, you know, you're not a Christian, you're, you're uh, whatever, somebody from South Africa, and moved by the Spirit, um, I stop my car one day and pick you up, because you're, you're obviously dying, and, you know, bring you to whatever, to the hospitals, or bring you to my home, or give you shelter in some way, shape, or form. Um, now, pointing at that man, are you Jesus? The answer is yes. He is Jesus. So death, judgment, heaven. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men and women what God has prepared for those who love him. Whatever you think heaven is, it just ain't. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It hasn't even remotely dawned on us what heaven is, but we know it's there. Uh, we are reminded of heaven every time we say, Our Father who art in heaven. Um, and the closest I can come to describing heaven to you is that in some way, in some way, heaven is when you are married to God for all eternity. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard. And then hell. So hell, uh, is it a place? Um, oh, the th I forgot the third judgment. This is the one that disturb disturbs me the most here especially in our time. Uh, John 3.19 says, judgment has already been passed on this world. The whole planet Earth with, the, I don't know how many people we have, uh, six billion maybe. We've all been judged already. And you say, well, when did that take place? Well, it took place, it took place when, when Jesus was born. The word took flesh and dwelt among us. Judgment has already been passed in this world, and the judgment in question is this, that the light came into the world, but men prefer the darkness because their deeds were evil. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Some men and women choose and prefer darkness. It's a great word in our society, I am pro-choice. You know, I, I, am, I stand for the right for it, for, uh, I, to, for a woman to choose to have her child aborted. Look at your judgment right there. Or you go to the polls and you know what you're doing and you know that the candidate you're voting for is absolutely against the rights of the child to live and that should he be elected into office, he will spread billions of our money across the world promoting abortion, but you did it with your vote, choosing the darkness. So then hell, is it a place? Well, when Jesus spoke about it, he pointed out that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was not prepared for man, even though we some will experience hell. It was not prepared for us, it was prepared for the devil and his angels. Um, so, if these angels are in hell, well, it's hardly a place then, is it? But it's, it's apparently it's an experience. Um, ex experience ourselves forever damned. Experience ourselves forever cut off from love. And yet, somehow, somehow, uh, we're alive. So is hell a place? 
we use, because we're human beings, um, we have to use images that, that are concrete to describe things. So we, we visualize hell um, as a pit, big pit, uh, where people burn for all eternity. Even Jesus, uh, our Lord, used the image of a city dump to describe hell. <clears throat> he talked about if your right hand causes you to sin, uh, cut it off, he said. Uh, better for you to enter into eternal life with no hands than to be cast into Gehenna with both. Now, Gehenna was the city dump outside the city of Jerusalem. And Jesus, Jesus used it as an image for hell uh, because the city dump burned morning, noon, and night. So those are the big four, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. And again, uh, Jesus is limited uh, in the sense that by, by our humanity, uh, he has to describe these things in words that we understand. But the, the truth of the matter is that eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men and women what heaven is, what God has prepared for those who love him. And the same goes with hell. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, or can we even know and understand um, eternal punishment? But we know it's, it's a reality. Oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Amen.